What's up everybody, Big D here, and it is time for the main event, the top 10 TV shows of 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, this was freaking hard. This is a challenge. Uh, I've seen over, well over 16, 17 TV shows this year of series of seasons complete. I'm going to be doing honorable mentions first, but I just want to tell you this was not easy one bit. Now, my top 10 movies of the year were so easy, but this, ooh, baby, this one was a difficult one. I'm going to put a link down below to the TV shows I'm going to be review, or, uh, reviewing in 2015, but also I am currently working on a video, a little montage. It's going to have music in it. It's going to have pictures uh, of all the shows I'll be doing uh, early next year for the first half of the year. And it'll be like cool. I'll try to put some cool music in there and just quick montage just for you guys. So I'm currently working on that. Stay tuned. Thank you so much. Quick, let me do the honorable mentions. And uh, I'll get out of your hair and you can do the t see uh, my top ten. Thanks so much. And real quick, I just want to give an honorable mention, man. These seasons have not finished, but they're about halfway through the season. Uh, first off, Arrow, season three. What a season it's been, man. Ra's al Ghul. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. It's seriously crazy. It's getting better. Every week it gets better, some way or another. Maybe slow. Maybe a slow episode, but it still progresses. The Flash, probably the most. I, I want to put it on my list, but it's only halfway through the season. Maybe next year. But uh, I was gonna put Arrow season two and all that on my top ten list, but it was so long ago. So so long ago. I, the first half last year or this year. And Gotham. Uh, Gotham's freaking amazing right now. I, I honestly love it. It's fan freaking tastic. It's fan freaking tastic every week. So basically, those are my honorable mentions. Uh, there could have been a couple more, but right now, you know, Bones, all them, you know, they're good. They're good. They're okay. All right. Supernatural's going okay. So uh, thank you so much for hearing the honorable mentions. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get started uh, with the top 10. Number 10 Gang Related. This show was on. Fox earlier this year, I believe it started in May, I reviewed it on my first channel, uh, the one that got deleted a couple months ago, the one where I did so many reviews, you can't see them on this channel because they're all gone, sadly, but Gang Related is just one of those shows where it got cancelled after season one, and it has a cult following, everyone, a lot of people who saw it loved it, no one hated it, it had, had the Acosta family, you know, Ryan Lopez, it was super freaking awesome. The action in there, it out felt real. The task forces, the DEA, or, uh, you know, just task force itself. Uh, the characters were really interesting. Uh, v and... Uh, I'm already forgetting all the other names. But really, it was a really cool TV show. And if you have not seen it, I believe they announced Season 1 DVD. Uh, I definitely want to own it. Because it's just one of those shows where I had a fun time watching it. It was just one of those... Where you can sit back, you know, watch action and have some drama in there with the Acosta family, you know, the, doing the uh, Acosta voice and all that. So, by the way, uh, the guy who's going to be in the Walking Dead companion show, um, I forgot his name, but he's the lead uh, guy, uh, Curtis. He was in Gang Related, so it's a super good show. I recommend you guys watching it. Number nine, The Last Ship which aired on TNT in the summer. This is amazing. I wanted to put it on my top five, but there's just so much TV, and I can honestly say this was the best year of television for any year of TV in history. It'll get better throughout the years, more, better, and better, but The Last Ship, it was freaking awesome. It's uh, produced by Michael Bay, and the, this, it felt so real, this 10 episodes, and not one episode, not one episode felt like a filler. It continued with the story uh, with um, Nathan James' ship, and we had uh, McSteamy or whatever from uh, Grey's Anatomy. Definitely, man, it was freaking awesome. I enjoyed it, the action in this. It's a, the virus, and it's apocalyptic, and it just brings you the feels. And I love the season finale for it. Season two is returning in the summer. It's just one of those shows where I want to own it on DVD because there was a man named Tex in there who was so funny. They had the likable characters. They had the hated characters. It brings all of a... Uh, just it, It's Apocalypse on the Ocean, man. It's really cool, and I uh, recommend you guys checking it out. Number 8, The Following, Season 2. This was uh, the first part of 2014, and it this this season of The Following started off my channel, uh, my other channel. Not started it off, but... It got me out there, and I had that was my first uh, one over 1,000 views. I know not really a huge deal, but for me it was. And uh, 
you know, it got me fans, and I, I thank the following for that. Um, I, I enjoyed the season, man. I, I honestly thought it was better than season one. Season three returns in March next year. You know, I just like the following. Joe Carroll returned. He had a beard and everything. Just the action. It was more psychotic. You know, praise Corbin. Praise Joe. So it definitely brought some aspect to uh, psychotic and the twins. And Kevin Bacon was at his best, man. Sean Ashmore finally got a little love with Max. You know, definitely it was super fun. And if you have not seen the following, recommend it, man. It's on Netflix right now, so check that out. Number 7, Falling Skies, Season 4. This aired on TNT in the summer, and while I can say that, there were some episodes where it was just, it was shit. It was shitty, some episodes. But there were some episodes where it was memorable. You had Lexi, which is Tom's uh, daughter, and she's an alien. It, it was just super, really interesting, man, and the season finale was one of the most action-packed or, you know, intense, dramatic episodes I've ever seen of Fallen Skies, and I, I can honestly say Fallen Skies is Walking Dead level of awesomeness of apocalyptic, that's my personal opinion, and just watching, um, just watching all the characters coming together, man, it was really cool, and oh, I left my crystal ball back in the magical land of Oz, just rememberable, rememberable quotes from this season, for sure, and it, it just keeps on getting better. Next year, 2015, is the final season for Falling Skies, the fifth season. And I'm super sad to see it go because it, it was getting low ratings. But overall, this season had its fun parts. And it's definitely worth, you know, checking out. Number six, Halt and Catch Fire, which aired on AMC during the summertime. This is definitely a mo the, one of the most underrated TV shows of all time. Um, no one watched it. It had Lee Pace, a star fandom of Lee Pace. It had um, Scott McNary or Scoot McNary. Man, I love this show. I loved reviewing it. I love week after week visiting the 1980s, man, and doing the giant and the computer. If you remember me from back then doing Home Catch Fire, you know how much I loved it. You know how much I loved reviewing it. And, you know, just I want to do something that no one else has the balls to do. You know, just that Lee Pace quote, man. It was fun. It was exciting. I enjoyed it. Uh, check it out, man. I don't think it's out on DVD yet, but we were lucky enough that AMC renewed it for a season two. Um, so it'll be coming out next year on AMC again. Definitely for sure, it's one of those, there were slow parts, there was an episode where it was just total shit, but th the acting was freaking phenomenal, man, and it, again, it's just underrated, uh, please check it out, go look at a promo or something, I'm super excited that it's renewed for a second season, and just the storyline, and just being the 80s, and bringing back that faith, that, uh, they had back in computers and the nerds and everything that uh, was good about the 80s for computers is uh, in this show. Check it out. Number 5, 24, Live Another Day. This aired at the end of summer. I believe it was the end of summer. No, it was in May. I'm so sorry. Uh, wow, this show itself, it was only 12 episodes. It wasn't the 24 episodes how they usually do it. But just having Kiefer Sutherland back, we're talking about 24 here. 24 is on my top five best shows in the world. It's just one of those shows where, you know, sure, it could have got shitty after a while. I've only seen four seasons of it, but I could honestly say that I've enjoyed every season thus far. Uh, but Live Another Day was just something awesome, man. Uh, he, he's back. Jack is back. Jack Bauer is a boss. And that season finale, the action in it, are you kidding me? That was freaking awesome. Jack, he did his rage mode. Jack Bauer, he freaking through knives and every it's crazy it's good having Kiefer Sutherland back and this may be the final season I mean because Kiefer has showed interest not to come back and then he wants to come back and then he doesn't he says he's too old so this if this is the last one it has to be in my top 10 man it just has to be overall uh I love 24 and live another day definitely deserve to be talked about and it's freaking awesome and the storyline was really cool and having a uh, just the cast back, the old cast. Number four, Dallas. All of you know that I love Dallas, the TV show, but this is the uh, new one, of course, and it only aired for three seasons. TNT has canceled it, sadly, uh, so no more Dallas. But 
we fought the good fight, man, for hashtag Save Dallas. We we fought, man, and, and we we didn't get it. But this season was freaking awesome, and just the way they ended it, they ended it so, you know, Jr. doing his laugh, John Ross, you know, John Ross, you know, just <laughs> and just you know doing that Jr. Ewan voice, you know, John Ross, we got the oil company. You got the, I just love doing the um his voice, but it's so exciting. It the reason is is that they aired it in February and then they ended it like in. October. It was one of those where it was like half a season and then it was like four months later it returned. So that was bad. They should, TNT never showed effort to it, but this show, it was freaking awesome. It, it had the drama. It had the comedy in its part. It had the love. It, it was basically a soap opera at night. It's definitely a great show. And for season three, they ended it enough where, you know, we're going to miss you, Dallas. So. Congratulations, Dallas, for at least airing three years. We're going to miss you. Thank you for everything you guys have done. Patrick Duffy, Josh Henderson, thanks so much. We salute you, baby. Number three, True Detective. Uh, I just bought this about a week ago, and it was 35 bucks. And I was, you know, Woody Harrelson, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So I had to check it out, and by God. It was freaking awesome. Now, the first three episodes are boring. Not boring, but they're super, super slow. Oh, my gosh. It's really slow. But it's interesting. Just Woody Harrelson's character is more of the, you know, he's more of the the, the one that gets mad easily. And he's going to start a fight. And you, you put shit on him. You're going you're gonna to fuck you up, you know. But Matthew McConaughey, he's the one where life is a circle. There is no God, there is no, you know, this and that. He, he just basically talks psychotic shit all day. And it's just amazing because it's like 2012, the president, they're talking uh, about this case in 95, which shows them going through the case. It was well-constructed, man. For eight episodes, I loved it. Uh, I don't have HBO, but since I bought it on DVD, it was freaking worth the money, the 35 bucks. They put so much effort into it. The acting was freaking phenomenal. Uh, I hope they win an Emmy or something. I hope this got you know, nominated for something, because just the acting itself was freaking amazing, the, the the customization of the characters and how they portrayed them was freaking amazing. Number two, American Horror Story, Freak Show. This is by far one of the greatest seasons of American Horror Story yet. I believe it tops Coven, it tops Murder House, and it may, may top Asylum. We still got two episodes left. But I just love the characters. I love each character they're playing. I'm glad they brought Michael Chiklis in. Um, Dennis O'Hare, man, is a god among men. He, he's amazing. Evan Peters, he's doing great. Jessica Lange is lovely, as always. Uh, Kathy Bates, you know, just the whole cast. They're playing such good characters. And I love the music in this and how they're bringing the musical aspect to it and how they're bringing the horror to it and the action. It's definitely keeping this series going and I'm glad it's been renewed for a season five so American Horror Story returns in 2015 uh, with a new season but overall it would have been my number one but number one will shock you to a pulp number one the strain um wow I remember in the summertime everyone was like people who follow me they were like dude watch the strain watch the strain you gotta watch the strain and I finally watched the strain ladies and gentlemen I, f I saw all 13 episodes. I bought it for 25 bucks. Holy crap. Holy crap. Freaking amazing. I, I enjoyed it. I loved it. It was something, man. I, I gotta tell you, just the effects, the action it. Vasily Fett, you are freaking amazing. That's a lot of next to chop. You know, it, just, it brought something new to me, man. I love this FX show. Uh, super freaking awesome. I enjoyed it. I mean, it's amazing. You guys got to check it out. It's super cool. The storyline, the characters, the characters are freaking amazing. Season 2 airs summer 2015, so I definitely, uh, you guys need to check that out. Thanks again. Uh, you know, just Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro knows how to do his horror. There are horror elements to it, obviously. There's action elements. There's comedic elements. It's all brought in perfectly well, and I'm surprised because I think it's 
my favorite season of the year thus far. It just brought something new that I haven't seen on TV for quite some time. Kind of, well, it's been a long time since Buffy. So these are vampires in there. Um, thank you guys so much for watching my top 10 TV shows of 2014. Hope all of you enjoyed. Remember, stay tuned for that montage coming in a couple days. I'm having a movie awards tomorrow. There should be a nominee video up already. You guys could check that out. Thanks again. So much for sticking around with me. Hope all of you enjoyed. Tell me your top 10 TV shows or top 5 TV shows of uh, 2014 down below in the comments. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share this video. Let everyone know that my top 10 TV shows are out. Also, I forgot to mention. I'm going to add this on my list just right now because I forgot to mention it. Fargo. Fargo is definitely one of those shows that I enjoyed so much. We're going to add that on here just... Uh, not as an honorable mention, but we're going to stick that aside. Fargo. Do not forget Fargo. Thank you so much. Hope all of you enjoyed. Blue Bob Thorne was amazing in that. See you all soon. May the Spock be with you. Always.